Under most circumstances, most of the, there are very few jobs in Sweden where someone would want to hire someone from another, from another country if they're low skilled, precisely because the regulations are so strict. The re, again, remember the, the whole point of Ron's proposal is to price out most people on Earth from the U.S. labor market. He says this. So when you talk about the poor conditions of workers in other countries, remember, Ron's proposal is designed to keep them poor at home. Is that true, Ron? Not, that's not true. Well, n not, not really. In other words, I mean, again, it's a very, it's a very simple issue. <laughs> it, it's a very simple issue. When you have billions of workers legally able to come to the United States and take every, any job they can that they're offered, you're really converting, again, the minimum wage into a maximum wage. Because basically very few people in the United States under those circumstances who do ordinary jobs would ever get paid more than the minimum wage. No, 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 but you've already said that. His, right. question, his point was that you, you want to you lock out the poor. That's right. That's what he said. And I always said, is that true? Well, it, again, it depends what you mean. In other words, if you're talking about preventing tens of millions of people coming here and driving down wages, yeah, that, that's certainly true. I, I'm trying even, to prevent that. Even though that. they are living in total misery back home and they would be earning five or ten times, oh, or ten times you know, as much it, as they It's perfectly here. true. If you allow an unlimited number of foreign workers to come to the United States and take a job under any circumstances, those foreign workers would benefit. They would end up being much more prosperous than they are right now. But ordinary Americans would be hurt at the same time by a comparable amount. Oh, so, I stop there. Brian, is sure. that true? Yeah. Okay. Oh. No, it is not. So if you want to get an idea well, well, no, about... Well, no, I mean, it sounds yes. extremely yes. plausible. Yes. Well, well I, <laughs> yes. So since we're, since we're in New York, let's talk about one of the greatest open borders experiments in history, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico started out as a third world country when the United States beat Spain. There was open borders. What has happened? Well, first of all, about half of Puerto Rico left over the course of 100 years. Secondly, Puerto Rico is now one of the richest countries in the world. What happened? Uh, people in Puerto Rico who otherwise would have been stuck in a third world country, not able to use their skills, many of them left and found that there was a better place for them to work. And those remaining found that their wages were higher. A lot of what happened was that Puerto Ricans went home and turned a third world country into a first world country. There's no reason that America cannot do for the world what it did for Puerto Rico. The whole well, world? What, one difference for the world. Is, what, one, yes. difference really? is, one, one difference is that Puerto give Rico... Me is, give me a century and I will give you prosperity over the surface well, of the earth. You got it. We will, we will meet you here. <laughs> Let's go to some questions from the audience. Uh, right there in the center, sir, and if you can raise, stand up uh, when the mic comes from your left-hand side and tell us your name. Thank you. This is terrific. My name is Jerry Orstrom, and my question is for the panelists opposing the resolution. Mr. Unz, uh, you asserted that opening labor markets would not only be devastating to local labor, but to the general economy itself. And yet, economists often advise us that economies are not so much about producers and workers, but about consumers. And to the extent that foreign workers are hired at all, it's because it's deemed that they will produce